we'll go through the same puzzle once again but with a different twist this time so let's see what exactly that twist is so i'll go through the puzzle once again and i'll give you a kind of a setup this time so that you can understand the difference between the previous puzzle and this one so again we have class a which has red juice in it and we have class b which has the yellow juice in it and the state that we wanted to achieve is we wanted to interchange the liquids in class a i want the yellow juice to be there in class b i want the red juice to be there now you might say that this is what we have discussed previously also what is the change here the twist here is the capacity of class c is different from class a and class b so in terms of putting it in numbers so let's say the capacity of this class a is of 300 ml so that means the content that we can pour inside this glass without spilling over is 300 ml same is the case with glass b also it can hold up to 300 ml content inside it the glass c capacity is only 150 this time with this setup tell me in the chat window will you be able to do this process that we have discussed previously will you be able to transfer the liquids into the after state that we have from where we are using this glass c in case if you need a extra second pause this video in 3 2 1 i'll reveal the answer if you see here since it is of the half size capacity i cannot go with the same example that we have discussed previously which is nothing but yes i can go ahead and transfer the liquid from glass a into glass c then transfer the liquid from b to a post that glass c liquid transfer into glass b so that is a previous story where in which the capacity of glass is equal to the capacity of glass a and glass b or since it is having a half capacity here or we cannot go with the same process because we might either lose the liquid that we have in glass a it can only hold up to 150 ml and rest of liquid might go off right so we might not be able to complete the entire requirement here we would be ending up having a 150 ml red juice rather than having the complete after case scenario that we have so that means the capacity of the glass is also important not just the glass here and right? if i give you any glass of any capacity you might not be able to achieve it yes if the glass size is of let's say 500 ml you can pretty much do this example but anything that is less than this 300 ml that is where you will not be able to achieve this requirement or you will not be able to solve this puzzle so that is where you need to understand a concept called data type. what exactly these are so this data types in short are nothing but understanding what is the value that is coming in so if you remember the variable story that we have discussed this is called as a variable and this is the variable name the content that is inside is called as a value now if you understand the value that is where you can properly plan your class right so if it is of 300 ml you would be finding a glass which could hold 300 ml or something larger than that so that we do not end up losing the information that is coming or the content that is coming in right so if you have a finite ml container here or a glass here you would be pretty much happily doing this exercise without any hurdles if it is anything less than 300 so that is where you would have problems now for us we know that this juice is measured in kind of liters right so that is where you would be finding a container which can hold this capacity if you have to tell it to the system how would you do it so that is where salesforce has given us data types in the apex line so data types what exactly will they do they would basically convey the information what kind of a memory block that the system needs to create so that can hold on to the value without spilling it over so that is where we need to understand the data types that are there in the system and for our requirements if there is a need for holding on to the value for certain point of time so that is where you need to select the right data type for this example you need to have either a container or a glass which can hold on to a 300 ml liquid or anything greater than that anything less than that would not completely satisfy your requirement either might you have a juice that is that might be overflown and you might end up having this scenario where in which your glass b would have only 150 ml so that is where it is always important to understand what kind of a data that is coming in and select the 
data type accordingly. Now, if you ask me how many kinds of data types that we have in the system, we have typically two categories. Category one is called primitive data types. And the second one is called user defined data type. So in short, this data types basically tell the system what kind of a content that is coming in so that it can accommodate those. And just like glass example, in the memory block, if your value that is coming in might need some more space, you need to tell the system that this is the data that I'm planning to save. You basically get ready in terms of allocating the memory block for me. Now, if you see here, this is the memory block that has been allocated. In case if I want to refer to this memory block, that is where I'll be referring it to the name called C. If it is a variable which is having a name as class C, that is where I will be calling that variable as class C. So as of now, I've just named it as C. So this is how it would look like. Now on paper and the diagram, this all looks good, but what exactly we would write in Salesforce so that we can kind of ask the system to do this for us. So saying that, yes, go ahead and create a memory block for me. And inside that memory block, assign that value as zero. Now, if you see here, there are like a couple of things, right? So let's break it down one by one. So if you see here, this is the first part and this is your second part. This is your third part, fourth part, and then fifth part. So if you see here, this line itself has five parts in it. Now, why have I broken down that line into five parts? You'll get to know shortly. Let's start from this number one. So what exactly this integer is all about? So integer is nothing but a data type. What exactly this signifies? This signifies that we are trying to ask the system, go ahead and create or go ahead and allocate a memory block for us so that we can save a number value in the system. When do you use this data type called integer? Whenever there is a need for holding on to a number for some time, that is where you would use this data type called integer. Right? So it is like this. If you want to hold on to a liquid, uh, which is of type 500 ml, so you need to find a container which can hold on to that value. Right? So anything that is having the capacity of 500 ml or more is something that you would select. Similarly, for this requirement, if I have to store a number, or if I have to ask the system to hold on to a number for some time, that is where I'll be telling the system that, yes, I'm trying to enter a number, right? So how would I convey that information by writing this data type? You'd be writing integer to convey to the Salesforce that, yes, I wanted to hold on to a number for some time. That is your first part. So first part is your data type. And the second part is nothing but your variable. name. So if you see here, the name that I've written here is nothing but your variable. This is your variable name as C that we have discussed. Now towards my right hand side, I have a value. Value is nothing but the value that goes inside your variable. So zero is the value that we have assigned. Now in between this variable name and the value, we have an, an operator called equal to sign. What is the job of this equal to operator here? So this equal to operator is called as assignment operator. The job of this assignment operator is nothing but it would assign the the right hand side value to the left hand side variable. If you see here, we are assigning this zero to this variable called C. So upon system processing this line, so this is what would happen in the background. So you can imagine that there is a memory block that would be allocated and the name of that memory block is C and the value that is inside it is zero. Now, if you see here, we have completed part one, part two, which is your variable name, Part three, which is an assignment operator. The job of the assignment operator is to assign the right-hand side value to your left-hand side variable. And part four is the value that you are sending. And part five is nothing but your kind of marking of an end of your state. So if you ask me, what is the need of writing this semicolon here? Now you write a sentence in our English language. Once you think that it is an end of the statement or end of that line or a sentence, you would put a full stop. For the end of the line, you are kind of conveying that this is the end of the line or end of the sentence by putting a full stop. Similarly, in Apex language, in case if you want to specify that this is the end of the statement, that is where you would use semicolon. A semicolon in your Apex language is like a full stop in your English language. Right? So always remember that whenever you wanted to mark an end of a statement, that is where you need to write a semicolon. So if you see here, so this is the syntax that we have used. If you ask me, is there any general syntax that I can go with? If I have to write down the syntax, here it is. Start with your data type. So that way you can tell the system that what kind of a data that you are sending in, followed by your variable name. 
Now, if you ask me, why do you need a variable name? So if your memory block has been created, it would be easier for you to refer it with a variable name, followed by your assignment operator, then followed by your value. If I write down the same syntax that I've used at the top here, so it goes like this. In, under the data type, you would have integer. Under the variable, you would have a variable name called C and assignment variable is as it is. In terms of value, we have zero and a semicolon towards the end. So this is how you would write your first variable in your Apex line. Now you might ask me, is the integer the only data type or are there any data types that we have? So under the primitive data types, you have a bunch of options that I've listed down here. Majority of them that you would be quite frequently using. And there are the user defined data types that we'll be discussing in our coming sessions. So if you see here, this primitive data types are listed down like this. So we have Boolean, we have long, we have string, date, date time, time, decimal, double and ID. So if you see here, every data type would be kind of having a specific kind of a requirement or specific kind of a use case where in which you would be using it. So depending on your requirement, you would be selecting the data types. 